Welcome to Rise Till Dawn and my review of SOS Titanic. Uh, this is basically a Klondike Solitaire, the game you've played since Windows 3.1 and so on and of course in the deck of the deck of cards when you are bored and before there were all these electronic games and it's pretty fun and weirdly fun compared to it's just Klondike Solitaire. Plays from one to five players in a cooperative way. If you play more players there's no competitive mode here and runs into 20 to 40 minutes I guess depending on the number of players and how familiar you are with the game. Maybe 15 minutes alone if you're playing and you are used to the game because it's pretty easy. But let's see how it plays and then come back for my review. See you soon! Okay, here is SOS Titanic setup for a one player game. I have one of the characters that are available for a one player game. You can see it by this. This has the one. You can play it in games with up to uh, one or more players. There are several different characters there in the game. And some of them are for three or more players, two or more players. And they are all crew from Titanic, such as this. This is the Captain Edward John Smith, and they have all have different abilities. But I am now the lookout Frederick Fleet, and uh, there are a few things here. For for, for example, uh, for starters, there's the one here. That means I get to draw one action card at the beginning. This is the get ready card, which is nice. So I have that in the beginning. Then it also says that I can draw up one to three cards during the passenger's rescue. I will get that, that soon. And there's a special ability here. So, uh, that's my character. And here is the game setup. So there's a row of four, six, eight and ten cards ready. And the, my deck, rest of the deck is here and the action deck is here out of the camera. And this is the first part where Titanic has just struck the iceberg and the time is 23.40. And this is the amount of points you would get if you would win the game at this page. So, what you can do on your turn, you have two phases. The first phase is optional, uh, you can move passengers around, so, just like in a normal Klondike Solitaire. So let's do a few moves here. I think we have some legal moves here. So there are two classes in the game, the tourist class and the upper class. And they can never mix. So even though this is 12, I can't put it under this 13 because they are of a different class and obviously don't talk to each other. So, but this is the 13. This is basically the king of the upper class. So you can see the reminder here. This means that this can go to an empty space here. So I will move it here. And now I have uh, uncovered a card, so I will show it. And okay, I have a 13. And as you can see, a 13 isn't the highest of the tourist class because there were more of them. So 17 is actually the highest card in the tourist class and 13 on this other. There are basically four colors in a sense because as you can see, there's the anchor in this one, but not one in here. So it has some glare. So they, they, they can mix, so I can actually move this here. But it, this anchor is basically only for uh, getting a higher score. You get more points if you can match the anchors too, but it's totally optional. Then we can uncover these two. Okay, now we are out of actions. We can't move anything. And this is optional, you don't have to move anyway. So then there's the second part of your turn, where you have two choices. Either you play an action card, or you set up a passenger's rescue. Which means that you draw uh, to your limit. So I have to draw one, two, three. And you have to decide before you draw how many you draw from the passenger deck. So let's say I try to do that because I don't want to use this card yet. These are very powerful and very really change the game. So let's draw say two cards. Okay, now oh, that's great. The one is the ace I sense in a sense like in Klondike. So this fits and I can now put it here and start a passenger survivor screw and the other card goes to a discard pile. 
So not that nothing bad happened, so we can go to our next turn or the next player's turn if we are playing multiplayer. And now again we got two moves, but there are no new moves available. So again either we play a card or set up the rescue. So let's try it again. Let's try with two again. Okay, we have a tin and a six, and that's a bust. So neither fit anywhere on our board. So both of them go to the discard pile, and we have just failed the passenger's rescue. So we have to flip the book, and we can see that one of the compartments is flooded, and the uh, time went by, and also less points. But nothing happens here yet. It's only after the third one that we have to do something. I will show that soon. And but the bonus thing is that we get to draw an action card from the action deck. But in here we our character comes into play and this just means that if you fail the passenger rescue you can draw three action cards and choose one of them. So we draw three and we get to pick one. These are cool. This lets us uh, get a passenger from the discard pile there. Uh, this stands in a mysterious passenger. This can stand in for another passenger. So if we have one missing from between, we can use this instead and uh, come back again. So let's take the mystery passenger for example, and we get it to our hand. Okay, so okay, next turn and nothing going on, and we have to keep going uh, or play the cards. So let's say we have failed the third time now. And once this happens, it means that there's panic. The, as you can see, the ship is down and the people in this compartment run hysterically to the next compartment. And what happens is you take all the cards from both compartments, shuffle them together, there's chaos and people running all over, and you only reveal the first card. So, if you had some nice line there, it's all gone now and the cards are shuffled there. So this is horrible and you have to really try to avoid that at all costs. And as you go by, more compartments start to flood and you lose these lines, you work your Klondike at you. As you can see, the ship has just fallen apart, time is 2.22. And uh, the game ends in two ways. Either you get all of the passengers safe to the four lifeboats and you have succeeded. Or if you turn the last booklet before all the passengers are safe, it's 2.30 a.m. and it's game over and you have lost. But you have a, you, you can count your score and you can even compare it to what the original Titanic would have got. It was 19 points for the original Titanic and that is very beatable, but all in all the game is very hard in other sense. But basically, it does just the game. Uh, you play cards, action cards, or set up the rescue, and every time you fail, you have to flip the page. And one more important thing. Uh, you might think, why wouldn't you always draw three cards? Because every time this deck runs out and is reshuffled, you also have to turn the booklet and you don't even get to draw an action card. So you really have to balance how many cards you want to draw. So. That's basically the main idea of the game. I hope I didn't miss anything important, but hope you got some basic info on how the game works. And there's that. Okay, so welcome back to SOS Titanic and my thoughts. Well, first of all, I really like it. Uh, there are many things I like. Uh, first, first of all, there's a lot of tension here. You wouldn't believe it with a deck of cards and uh, at first, but if, as you saw in the gameplay section, hopefully uh, you could actually get hopefully some of the feeling there because uh, when the decks flood, the feeling is just a panic for you too because you know that you now have five or six in a row, but you can't move them anywhere and they are the next one to be flooded and you are hysterically trying to find the card that binds them together somewhere else or maybe gets them to a survivor's group uh, safe to a lifeboat and uh, all these things are just brilliant and the, basically the game is the action cards without them it would be just solitaire Klondike I guess uh, but the action cards are very powerful but you really have to think when to use them and how to use them 
and getting the most out of the action cards is the key to this game and that's just great and also it's weirdly thematic compared to again Klondike as in so that all of the mechanics really almost all of the mechanics really work just such as the flooding of the compartments as time goes by and the people rushing to the next deck and causing chaos there and your lines of people going to the lifeboats is now all messed up and you have to find the children and women first now again and it's just uh, brilliant and the art book really gets you more feeling because you see the Titanic slowly sinking more and more and you are losing the compartments there and there's just this terror of <laughs> what's going on and uh, also, you just get this feeling that you really want to save everyone, <laughs> you just care about all of the passengers in a sense, I guess, and you just want to save them all, but it's very hard, and that's great. And as I said, yeah, it's difficult, so you will probably win this very rarely, or one, of, one out of ten or so, maybe, depending on how much you want to optimize things, and depending on the luck, of course. And it works great solo and it works nice with two players. I haven't played it with more than two and I don't think I really have any desire to do so because the decisions are still very light and the moving of the things is only done in every few turns or stuff like that. So uh, if you get more players than two it's really... There's really no point in getting more players I guess. Yeah, the abilities are nice in the characters and when everyone has action cards you can actually think about when to play this and now you don't have to draw the passengers and I, I, I get to draw more of them and stuff like that so it's okay and I would <laughs> play it I guess but I guess what I'm trying to say is that if I had three or four or five players I'd rather play something else but two player is cool because it's a back and forth hand but I think this is best solo okay so some negatives I guess too I guess I could think of uh, the other one isn't really for me, but the first of all you have to shuffle pretty much here uh, as you know from Klondike or Solitaire that you really have to shuffle these all these decks and the setup after each game you have to play again because you want to uh, you really have to shuffle them truly because in this game you really set them up in order so through shuffle is needed uh, but, all it, but in, in my case at least I really enjoy the physical aspect of the deck of cards so for me it's almost a plus but I know some people don't mind that really like that and I guess it could take like a third of the game of shuffling these cards and setting them up and everything so that's a potential negative and another thing I can't help what notion but mention to you is that there's a pretty big luck factor here of course because that's a deck of cards and solitaire and yeah you can mitigate it with the action cards but if you get the awful draw that all the lifeboats are at the bottom of these unknown piles and you don't get all any of the action cards that let you like manipulate those lines and you just don't happen to get all any of the moves in the beginning and you potentially even miss the first line and before you've done any progress and then you are in for a rough ride uh, but all in all I'm not saying it's only a luck based game you can really up your game in this by learning the cards and learning to use them at the best moment but then again if, even if you are the bird's best player in this I doubt you will always win the game but, but yeah that's luck and it's not really a bad thing because this is a like light and short game so it's not that bad but it's just to note that it's definitely there okay but that was SOS Titanic I can highly recommend getting a copy if you like solo games if you like playing solitaire Klondike with uh, sometimes this is just a very much more fun version of that but yeah so that was SOS Titanic by Bruno Cathala and Ludovic Moblang and published by Ludonote Games. But see you next time.